Hey guys, welcome, this is the Apple Guy here. And now that the iOS 12 jailbreak is out, that means that all the tweaks are being updated to work with it. The most popular one, and the biggest reason why you'll want to jailbreak your own device, is Noctis 12, a system-wide dark mode that changes every single bright piece of your operating system. But before you go out there and pay the fee of between two and four dollars, depending on when you buy it, to own it, I'm gonna go through every single setting within it so that you know exactly what you're buying and that you wanna buy it. But you will, cause I do, and I love it. So there are three components to Noctis and how it'll affect your system. One are widgets and notifications that it modifies. The second is folders and docs. And the third are pop-ups, like 20% battery remaining, those type of pop-ups. This one here, this is BioProtect. Any type of pop-up like this, it'll darkify. We have, so from the blurs to choose from, there's Cloudy, Glass, Grayscale, Light, Mac OS, Original, and Rainbow. First things first, we're going to be taking a look at what my favorite blur setting is, and that is cloudy. This is cloudy on a black and white background. You see it's very monotone. It's nice and dark. When there's only one notification, it's pretty uh, see-through, translucent, I would say. And so it can still get kind of bright if it's on a white background. And once notifications start stacking, it blurs up and gets darker and doesn't let so much light through. If we go over to the Today View, all of these widgets also have the cloudy dark setting on it. You can see they're still very see-through. If you look at the little Mars robot there, it can easily be seen behind the notification. And it really does define that widget that is in front of it. It can sometimes make some things hard to see. As you can see, sometimes the background on the news app isn't dark enough to see the white text very clearly. And then with the weather, again, sometimes the very thin font can sometimes blend in with the brighter background. But I just uh, stick with it. And I stick with it usually really because once I open up my phone, you can see here with the bluish background, when I go to that today view, these widgets are so much more colorful. I mean, I really, I just love the way they look here with the more colorful background. Again, this is cloudy. White text is further popped out with a colorful background versus a more high contrast black and white background. Then when you get down here for some widgets, the text is also actually translucent, which I personally love. Technically it would make it harder to see, but I am obsessed with the way the text is so very slightly brighter than the background, but still retains that same color. Um, here you have it in the news app, and then my favorite is the weather app, where the text is just, it's just a part of the widget. You know, it's not stuck on top of the widget. It looks like text that was carved out of the frosted glass that the widget is. So that's cloudy. Here we have, uh, we can see the folders. Again, these are black. I don't believe these change with different blur settings. They stay the same. Oh, that's by Protect, sorry. Um, let's check out the other blur settings. We'll try glass now. You always have to respring, I believe, unless you don't. No, you do have to respring. And now that we're back in, this is glass, and with glass, you can see it's nearly the same as cloudy, but it doesn't have a dark tone to it. And what I mean by that is, is that it doesn't take the background and then darken it a tiny bit while blurring it. It just blurs it. Um, so it's still just as dark as outside the widget, and it's just very slightly blurred. I, I suppose I'd say I like this when there's white text, but in these widgets like the news widget and the weather widget, the text that is only slightly brighter than the background kind of gets too uh, thrown to the sidelines. You can't really see it as well. And then with notifications, it's really almost the same as cloudy, but again, it's just not as thick. The blur doesn't feel thick, so more of the background gets through and it doesn't stack the same as cloudy where it gets darker and darker. It does get slightly darker, but it's still very, it's so very bright. On to the next one. Grayscale. What would grayscale? Grayscale is pretty much just black on white. It's it's as thick as you can get. It's it's a very it's a solid background. There's no translucence in it. It's not uh, using the wallpaper behind it in any way whatsoever. Um, but it does also give you dark mode. 
it does give you dark notifications. I think a lot of people are gonna like this one a lot. It leaves it simple, it doesn't mess around with blurriness. If you don't like the Windows Vista and the new Mac OS X and styles of, of blur, of frosted glass that's taken over the world, this is the dark mode that you're probably gonna stick with. And again, the folders, they always stay the same. So these folders are still very, very slightly translucent. Uh, they're not solid, but they're very close. Um, on the lock screen with notifications, Again, no translucence, even on the, oh, actually, you know what, I'm wrong. On the singular notification, there is the tiniest bit of translucence. It is not entirely dark. You do get a little bit more. But what I think happens is that it will not infer any color into the notification. So if you have a colorful background, none of that color is going to show through. It's still just going to be dark. It's going to be grayscale. It'll take all the luminance values coming from every color in your wallpaper and just convert them to a gray scale, to a gray. Um, yeah. Now they're back in here, we're going to try light and just re-swing. So this is light. It is still technically a dark mode, but it is very hardly a dark mode. It's more of just all the color and it doesn't try to be too dark. So with the blue background, with the light blue background, it is very light blue. Um, I think a lot of people who want they don't necessarily want dark mode, they just want cooler blurs. We'll choose this one. I think this is definitely best for them. The, uh, I think the text, this, the translucent text comes out pretty okay. Thinner fonts like the degrees can sometimes maybe get washed away, but uh, that's just a give and take you'll have to accept. And with notifications, it's hard to see with the black and white grayscale background, but you can assume it'll be the same colorful type that the widgets were. Um, it's still very translucent, so there's, it's not going to get darker. Um, so white text on a white background can sometimes be hard to see. Now we're going to choose Mac OS X and see what that looks like. This is Mac OS X. I honestly can't tell you why they named it Mac OS X. I don't think it particularly looks like any piece of Mac OS X that I can recall from memory. It really does just look like the light one with more blur. So the light doesn't really have much background blur, um, but it is extremely colorful. I like it. I think it's okay. I think it works fine. This text is a little dark for me, but that's okay for some people, I suppose. And then here, Mac OS X is still definitely a dark mode. As you can see with stacking notifications, even though they're light when uh, singular, once they start stacking, they can really get dark, very dark. Second to last is original. I'm not sure if this is Apple's original or an original that um, Noctis, the, t the Noctis team chose to make and call original, or if it's an original from a previous version of Noctis before they started customizing and giving us presets. Yeah, I'd say this is original. So with the uh, so with the light mode that already comes with the phone, this would be its dark mode counterpart. It is simply a dark mode with the same blur values as that light mode. And it's okay. It it is dark mode. It does leave a little bit of frosted glass for people to feel like, oh, I have frosted glass. But to me, I like the frosted look more and less of interrupting darks between the background and the widgets themselves. And notifications are very dark, especially when they stack. Here we have the singular notification. It's still dark and the background doesn't really get in its way too much. And once it starts stacking, forget about it. It's pitch black in there. Last but not least, we have Rainbow. So this is Rainbow. Honestly, it looks like one of the ones that we previously just saw. I can't tell too much difference. The background is very, very blurred out, but it also isn't applying too much darkness to the background, uh, while at the same time giving a lot of color through that frosted glass. Actually, I really like this one. It really, the widgets blend in with the background a lot, so when you scroll through it, it doesn't feel like the background is disappearing too much or being separated by the widgets, but I wanna say it's almost not bright enough for me. For white text, it's fine, but when you get into the News app and the Orlando app, it can sometimes, it feels like I would have a hard time reading that. And on notifications, same thing, it does get dark here when they stack, not dark on a single notification there as you can see and the background does get through quite a bit, but once they start stacking it can get pretty dark. Not as dark as the original where it gets pitch black, but still a uh, uh, pretty dark.
So I don't use Noctis 12 for applications. I use Eclipse, which is uh, what everyone recommends for using applications. They really, people really just leave Noctis 12 for what I just showed you, which is the blur settings, the notifications, the widgets, the folders, and the dock bar, but it also works with some select apps. And I will show you that for the sake of showing you. So I'm gonna turn off dark mode and I'm gonna enable some apps here. I'm gonna go with classic for now. Enabled apps, let's do settings and music because those will be everyone's most popular things. And we'll just respring. So if we now go back into my phone app or something, it's white again, because I turned off Eclipse. But if we go into settings, which is what I enabled for Noctis, this is Noctis 12 classic dark mode. The background is pretty black. It's not OLED black, it's not pitch black, but it is very black and that text is gleaming white. Um, and it's again, same with music, black on red, black on grays for notifications, and it is not inverting the album cover, so you're safe there in all instances. These, uh, the, the color, the play and pause controls go grayish, go light gray. Links left at red, red, red. Um, the shuffle and repeat parts are left pretty bright, but I guess they want you to know that those buttons exist if they're a little bit darker. Maybe you wouldn't be able to tell them away from the background. But yeah, I actually like this. You know what, I almost, I wanna say like this more than Eclipse, but that's not true. I just, I'm just saying that because I have a very particular clip setting that I'm starting to get annoyed about that I made myself. So that was classic, and we're going to go to the next one, which is coffee. Let me spring. Going right in the settings. Bada boom, that's coffee. So with coffee, it looks like the background, not the taskbar, is the top bar here, but the background of an app page specifically is brighter than classic, and it hues even a little purplish. Um, very so slightly purple or uh, I don't know what other people would call it crimson maybe a purplish crimson text is left full white we're going to music about the same thing the the background gets a tad bit brighter and gets some red put into it um, and all the font colors and button colors remain the same next up is dark That's dark, it looks, it's very monotone, there's no color infused. It just seems a little bit darker than classic, just ever so slightly, ever so slightly darker. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty, it can get pitch black. Um, yeah, yeah, it can get darker. It's just slightly, it's just another shade darker from classic. This one I actually like how music looks with this setting. It does get pretty black, but uh, the reds, the reds really get a chance to shine through. Again, the fonts and buttons stay pretty much the same shades, I think, from my eye. Next one is Midnight. That one sounds good. Midnight, I think, is nearly the same as dark. It has the same back color as dark, but what I think is the difference is that the top tabs, the toolbars, and such aren't a shade lighter. In dark, they're slightly a shade lighter, so you know that they're toolbars, but in here, it looks like it's all the same color, so it just blends in together, and nothing gets uh, separated. It seems like every, everything's together, nothing's separated. If we go into music, yeah, you can tell, you can see down here, the toolbar down here isn't really that separated from the background and when library's up there it's not separate it's all the same tone it's very very seamless looking a very seamless dark you can just you can see right here i actually had problems finding the buttons because the outside of the buttons aren't clearly defined, so I'm not even sure if these are buttons, they just look like text on a screen. You can't really tell if they're buttons with midnight. Next up is Skyline. Ooh, Skyline. So look, it looks like Skyline is kind of trying to mimic the blue scene in the sky. In a nice cloudless day, you'd find what looks like stereotypical, just infinite blue that can go on forever. And I think that's what they're trying to replicate here a little bit. The tabs are clearly defined in this one. So you can see that they, they get a brighter color than the background. The tabs are clearly defined at the top. And if we go into music, I'll bet the taskbar, the, the bottom bar is also clearly defined. Actually not, so. Hmm, actually in music, they're all the same color. You can't tell at all what is the background, what is the front. It looks like the font colors and control colors, button colors, all stay the same. And this one as well, it just changes those. Um, but yeah. 
Next up is Sunset. How much would it be? It's just a bunch of orange and reds. Orangey red. Not a bunch of orange and reds. A bunch of orangey red. Um, Texas white. The gray ones seem to kind of get blurred. That says airplane mode right there. If you can read it, I can hardly read it because that red, orangish red, is just popping out so, so much through everything. It's so bright. It's so, uh, it's, it's harsh. Tabs are defined here though. The top tab is defined, but if we go into music, I'm willing to bet that the top bar is not defined here. Not defined. Same color, all same color. The font colors have not changed, so this red, the red buttons here completely get destroyed. You can't see a single thing there. And when you're chosen on which tab, on which page you're on, that also is red, and that can kind of get weird looking. The grays kind of look weird to me. And when we go here, we're missing a lot of buttons. There's three buttons right here. There's the there's the artist name here. Can't see it, can't see it. Artist names are in dark gray here, very hard to see. You can still see them if you look closely, but it's pretty hard. This one uh, can definitely use some refinement. And last but not least, True Dark. Now I believe the True Dark is OLED Dark, which I can't show you because I don't have an OLED display. But uh, ooh, look at that, the 20% battery remaining looks significantly darker in this mode. That's pretty cool. Oh yeah, it's black on black on black on black on black. And I'm willing to bet that on an OLED screen, this is going to save you some battery because it will turn those pixels off. Those pixels, the black pixels will not be on. It will turn them completely off. The only things that will be on are the things that you can see on the screen, which isn't much. The tabs here uh, do not have any lines around them that tell you that they are indeed buttons and such. And if we go into music here, completely black. And I think this works a lot. This uh, feels like the, it actually kind of feels like the U2 iPod to me. I miss that guy. Where it was just black on red like this. It was pitch black red with the beautiful gleaming reds coming out of that black. It really makes the reds pop how dark this is here. Everything seems clearly viewable here. The artist names in the queue, this dark gray text, uh, looks a little hard to see, but not hard enough that you choose not to use this. And it, having all these colorful um, artwork on this dark black really makes them pop a lot the same way that these red buttons do. It makes everything else pop. And that's the last one. And that's it. That is Noctis 12 for iOS 12 jailbroken devices. It is incredibly easy to jailbreak your device for iOS 12 as long as you're on the right operating system, I swear. We'll run into the settings very fast with blur settings. There are the profiles, which are kind of presets right at the top. And the next one down is enable custom settings. And here you get a lot of different things to play with on how you want to customize your specific unique blur. Color burn tint alpha, color burn tint level, color offset alpha, darkening tint hue, darkening tint saturation, color tint alpha, color tint mask alpha, darkening tint alpha, darkening tint brightness, grayscale tint brightness, grayscale tint level, saturation delta factor, blur radius, header overlay alpha, body overlay alpha. And application settings about the same. You have your presets, what they call profiles at the top, a uh, button to enable your custom settings for your color choices. And here you can choose primary color, secondary colors, text color, secondary text color, and tint colors to really customize and unicify your phone. In this patches button, you have optional things to just make the operating system look a little more cohesive. The first one is invert page dots, which is for the home screen and the dots at the bottom to tell you how many pages you have. Uh, message reply notification, the best one I think, is that when you get a message up top and you go to respond to it, the respond page is also black. So if I find a message here, I might not have an iMessage one, but maybe, maybe Messenger works. If I go here, well, it doesn't because it doesn't, it doesn't have that unique one, but you get the gist. When that pop, when it quick reply pops down and you start typing, that'll also be pitch black and follow your application rules. Uh, dark reply headers, white header text. I'm not sure what exactly what that is. Launch screen. So when you open up an app, like I can open up this, or I can open up something, uh, this page that waits before the app actually opens, that can go dark as well. With it off, it just stays white. The launch screen will stay white. Um, and dark CC are for dark control modules, which you can also enable and it makes it look pretty sweet. Um, and then dark keyboard, kind of like Blord from the past. It just creates a standard dark keyboard across the entire operating system. And these are just uh, for you to enable the different pieces of this hack. Dark folders, uh, as seen as the home screen, a dark dock for the home screen, dark widgets, dark notifications, dark media, and dark alerts. These are everything that comes with this patch. And that is it. That is Noctis 12 system-wide dark mode for iOS. 
I'll see you guys later.